The European Union is a union of European nations. Not all of them, but 27 of them. You already know that. They form the EU. They like to believe they're united. Perhaps not on all issues, but at least on Ukraine. And on how they respond to Russia's invasion. But even that is proving to be quite difficult. The war is testing this union and how. They're at loggerheads again, this time with Poland and Hungary. Both these countries are EU members and both have banned the imports of Ukrainian grain. A third country may join them soon. Romania is also planning to impose such a ban. They don't want Ukrainian grain. And the EU is fuming. Our next report explains. These were the scenes that played out on the roads of Romania earlier this month. These people are farmers. They're protesting against the import of Ukrainian grains. It's flooding markets in Eastern Europe. There's an excess supply of grain courtesy Ukraine, and it has led to a fall in prices. Local farmers are upset. Their earnings have nosedived. What makes it more difficult for them is the fact that Ukrainian grain is cheaper. I know our Ukrainian colleagues also need to sell, but it is unfair competition, however. It's the same story in Poland and Hungary. They decided to take matters into their own hands. They have banned the imports of Ukrainian grain to protect their own farmers. Hungary said it was following Poland's lead and restricting the import of Ukrainian grain. It blamed the absence of meaningful EU measures for its decision. What measures is Hungary talking about? Well, last month, the Prime Ministers of Poland, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria and Slovakia approached the EU. They wanted the Union to stop the influx of Ukrainian grain into Europe and also reinstate tariffs. The tariffs were removed last year after Russia invaded Ukraine. The farmers of Eastern Europe want them back. But the European Union is not on board. It's not happy with the ban that Poland and Hungary have imposed. The EU's executive arm, the European Commission, shot off a mail on Sunday. It accused Poland and Hungary of overstepping their authority and said that matters of trade policy were a matter of EU exclusive competence. It said that unilateral actions are not acceptable. Strong words from the EU, but not strong enough to convince Poland and Hungary to undo the ban, because both these countries are facing the ire of their farmers, and farmers are a strong constituency. No country wants to fight their citizens to please the EU. Worse still, they don't want to appear to be serving Ukraine's exclusive interests at the cost of their own people. And while European countries wrestle with each other, Ukraine has more pressing concerns. The fate of the Black Sea grain deal is hanging in the balance. It allows Ukraine to export its grains. Now, Russia has issued a threat. Unless its demands are met, it won't honor the grain deal. The deal was extended for just 60 days, and not fully, solely due to the fact that exactly half of this deal did not work, and still does not work. We know that UN representatives are making certain efforts, but they are not succeeding, and the second half of the deal is still not working. These conditions are not being met. No deal can stand on one leg. It must stand on two legs. In this regard, of course, judging by the state of play today, the outlook for the extension is not so great. And what are Russia's demands? It wants its agricultural bank to be re-included into the global SWIFT banking system. Russia also wants some sanctions lifted. These are sanctions on Russian food and fertilizer products. The West is in no mood to oblige. And this will decide the fate of the grain deal and food prices across the world. Russia and Ukraine are top producers of food grains. They supply across the world, especially to developing countries. As of last month, 23 million tons of grain and food products were supplied through the Black Sea Grain Initiative. And 65% of the wheat exported went to developing countries alone. So if Russia suspends the deal, food prices will rise again. Also, Ukraine's economy will take a big hit. Unfortunately for Kyiv, it's not just Russia which is hurting it. Its supposed friends in Eastern Europe are openly prioritizing their own interests.